He was rightly paranoid. He was expecting to be lifted. Um, he took all sorts of safety, security precautions. The very first time I met him, the first five minutes, uh, I said to him, look, I need to record this interview. And I pulled out my iPhone, because that's what I use now, rather than a tape recorder. And uh, he was in shock. He says, you'll get that out of here. You know, the NSA can use your iPhone as a microphone. They can listen in uh, on our conversation. And I had to go and put it in the freezer compartment of a fridge, because that's the only way he thought it would be safe. In his room, he piled pillows up against the door jamb in case somebody was eavesdropping from outside. But he was rightly uh, you know, paranoid. And whenever the phone went off, he would, he would be jumpy and panicky, thinking this was some, somebody trying to get him out of the room. Now we do hear from these agencies about this, uh, this black hole of these people going off radar now because of the intelligence that's been leaked by these publications from Edward Snowden. Do you feel uh, any guilt about that? Is it a burden for you? Does it keep you up at night? There's not, um, there's not guilt, uh, but there is, um, I mean, it's a nightmare for me. I mean, the danger is, I mean, there will be another terrorist incident in Britain or America or wherever, uh, and at that point, it would be easy for the intelligence agencies to turn around and say, uh, that this is the Guardian's fault. Um, you, you revealed techniques, and if it hadn't been for you, maybe these people would still have been under surveillance. Um, now, that might be propaganda, um, but it's something they can hit us over the head with if they choose. That was going to be my last question about Edward Snowden. Have you had any contact with him? And really, what are his, are his options? You know, John Kerry saying that he should man up and, re and return to the US. Is that something he should do? Or, uh, you know, the US say there's not going to be a deal struck here. We'll get him on a plane today if he wants to, if he wants to come back. The, um, I, I mean, I'm still in touch with him. I speak to him maybe about once a month uh, through encrypted chat. Um, the, he, he doesn't want to be in Russia. He was on his way to Latin America when his passport was revoked and he was held in transit at Moscow. Um, he's, uh, he was given a one-year uh, asylum in uh, Russia and I think that comes to an end at the end of July. Uh, chances are the Russians will extend it and even if they didn't he's got one-year appeal. Um, but he's better, no, no matter how hard life is for him in Russia, it's better than sitting in solitary confinement in a supermax prison in America. I mean, that's the option that John Kerry's uh, offering him. So he's better off in Russia than uh, going back, as John Kerry suggests, to sort of man up. Um, his options is to try and change opinion in America that would allow some deal to take place. Um, he could turn up one day, maybe in Germany, and appeal for asylum. I think German public would probably uh, be sympathetic to him, but chances are Angela Merkel, not wanting to damage a relationship with America, would send him back.